All right, here's another project. So a subscriber actually dropped this thing off. It's a 2002 Yamaha Raptor 660. This one's going to take quite a bit of work. So it does start and it does ride, but it bogs really, really bad and like won't rev up at all. So it's very weird. Um, right away, I can see that the carburetors are kind of like half on, half off of it. I'm not sure if the guy just quick put these on before he dropped them off or what, but you can see there's quite a bit of an air leak there happening. Um, so that probably doesn't help the situation. But um, a lot of burnt wires are up here. I can see that the whole wiring harness was kind of burnt at one point, so I don't know if that's an issue as well. Um, maybe the CDI got fried. I'm not really too sure, but we're gonna figure that out today. We're gonna dig into this thing and see if we can get it fixed up. But right away, I will start this thing up for you guys so you can hear what it sounds like. It sounds pretty bad. <laughs> Let's see, where's the key on this thing? Up here, key on, and then. So it starts right up. See, and then it just dies. So it sounds really, really bad. Let's see if it's better with the choke on. Yeah, that's the same thing with the choke on. But it'll, it'll sit here and idle all day. Lights work. Lights work. See that? It's not sound very good. <laughs> so there are a couple sensors on here. There's a parking brake sensor right there. And then I think there is, yep, there's a clutch sensor right there. And then there's a reverse sensor on it as well. And then there's also a sensor for the rev limiter on the CDI. And uh, he said he tried to bypass that already. That's creepy. Garage door just opened. Okay. What the heck? Um, all right, I think we have a ghost in the house. How the heck did that open? <laughs> that is super weird. That was really weird. But uh, anyway, so he tried to bypass the rev limiter on the CDI and apparently that didn't do anything either. So we're gonna try to diagnose this thing just like any other quad. We'll start with the basics and then go from there. Um, we'll test spark, compression, um, probably do a valve check on it because maybe the valves are out of spec. And then we'll go through the carburetor and uh, we'll have to test all the sensors as well. Try to figure out what the heck is causing it to do that. But you can see every time we start it, does the same thing. Oh. Huh. It just shuts off. So it just sounded like the one my bearing was going as well. You could hear it just spinning in there. So maybe the Woodruff key is sheared off and timing's off. Tons of different possibilities. I could be wrong with this thing, so I guess without further ado, let's jump into it and see what we find out with this thing. All right, let's start by taking off the seat here. Let's see what's underneath here. Check out the air filter, battery, all that fun stuff. You can see the CDI. He said that he just twist tied the, the CDI wires together for right now. You can see them, they're right there. 
because he tried to bypass certain things and it wouldn't work. So, um, battery leads are all tight. That looks good. Let's see what's in the air box here. Oh, that's really tight in there. Air filter looks pretty good. Nothing wrong with the air filter. Hmm. So the neutral light does come on. That's good. All the lights work, we know. Kill switch works. So it looks like the parking brake is kind of janky on here. You can see there's a switch right here. And right now, it's acting like the parking brake is on, because it switches out. So if we hold that switch in like that and start it up, let's see if it gets better. That'll be the first test here. That was not the problem. <laughs> all right, let's get all the plastics off. I want to get to the engine and get those carburetors sealed on there a little bit better because right now they're like half off and we actually we might just start with the carburetors and tear those apart. I know with the Yamaha Raptor 660s there's a bigger main jet in the right side carburetor so maybe he put the same size jet in both carbs. That could definitely be a possibility as well. Alright we got the front plastics off over here. Let's just check the coolant level here. And that's topped off, that's good. Alright, you can see the wires that are burnt. I can see they're all kind of crispy. That wire burnt as well, right there. And all these are burnt. So hopefully nothing got racked in the down in there. You can see they're burnt as well. So I'm, wa I'm wondering if something got hot. Burnt all that. It looks like this wire was burnt too. And that's for that sensor right there. So maybe that sensor is bad or not working. That could definitely do the trick. That one's burnt all the way through, isn't it? That one's pretty bad. We'll have to dig into that and see, because that sensor might not be working causing the problem. Let's get that gas tank off and check the carburetors out first before we do anything. All right, so this is how it came. You can see the carburetors aren't really fully in the boots right here. So there's probably a pretty big air leak happening right here. So let's just see if the choke is working. Yeah, choke is working. Everything looks like it's working. So let's get these carburetors out and just see if the correct jets are in there. All right, so one of the first things I like to check before digging into the carburetor is checking the petcock flow. So the petcock right there can clog up, causing gas not to flow. And uh, obviously that's gonna cause your bike or quad to run like crap. So let's first check that, make sure everything's good. So checking the on position. Good flow coming out of there, and reserve, good flow. So petcock checks out. All right, here is a set of dual carburetors. So this is the left side of the quad, this is the right side. Um, the choke thing broke right off and I tried to loosen it. Um, I think somebody over tightened that, but it snapped right off. That's pretty common. I've done that before on these, so you just can't over tighten them. But uh, anyway, let's just check out the right side carburetor first. Dig into this one. This is the one that should have the bigger jet. That's a little melted right there. That gasket in there. Looks pretty clean though. 
What I like to do with these carburetors is just do one at a time so you don't mess up the parts in them. So let's just see what the pilot is. Pilot is a 22.5. It's kind of clogged. Let's see what the main jet is here. There's no marking or reading on the main jet, so that doesn't help. <laughs> That's a bummer. He did give us the other carburetor that came with the bike, so we can probably use the jet side there too. He said he bought a rebuild kit for this thing. Float looks like here. Everything looks good there. Needle looks good. So for everything checks out, let's just see what that air screw was at. So we're at one, two, about two and a half. Two and a half on the fuel screw. So that was good. That all looks perfect. So we did a good job setting up the carburetor. That all looks good. Everything looks brand new in there. All right, we're gonna get the other carburetors out. He got another set here. I just wanna see what kind of jets they're running in this one. All right, so we have both carburetors sitting here. Uh, the jet that was in the old carburetor was, let's just see here, it was a 162.5. Um, it's supposed to be a 145, and the one that was in here, and the one that was on it, was a 95. So we want a 145 for the right carburetor, and then a 140 for the left carb, and that's stock jetting. And this thing has stock fire. So there's no reason that I shouldn't have a stock jet. So we're gonna be putting this 145 jet, main jet, in here. And then the pilot's good at 122.5, that is stock. So let's put the 145 in. This one goes in here. Just kinda of get everything situated here. So the 145 goes into there. Alright, and then we can keep the 22.5 pilot, so that's all good. Alright, on to the left side of the carburetor. So this one's going to take a 140 main. Let's see what was in it. Looks pretty clean, a little bit of dirt in there. Get that out. Let's see what it was running here, and then it needs a 95 starter jet. So this is the starter jet right here. Let's see if that was a 95. There's no labeling on it. So we've got a 95 right here. We're just going to put in there. It has a 95. I 
that one in there. That one's 95. Let's see what the main jet was at. This one should be a 140. Again, no markings on it, so we're just going to use the 140 that we have right here. Looks like the same hole size. This one's a little bit bigger, actually. So we'll put the 140 back in there. All right, carburetors are back to stock. So let's reinstall those next. All right, now that the carburetors are done, let's move on to the next step. I just want to check the oil, make sure it's not milky, make sure there's enough oil in here. It's always good to check it before continuously starting it up. Looks pretty good. Doesn't look milky at all yet. Okay, don't screw the dipstick in. Oh, there's a lot in there. It's overfilled, for sure. Uh, look how much it's overfilled there. So we'll probably drain that and fill it up to the correct amount. There's just a little too much in there. A little too much oil in there. But, um, all right, now that the carburetor's done, oil checks out, let's work on these valves. I want to take out the valve caps right here, and then there's another one down here, or a couple down there. So we'll check out the valves, make sure those are within spec. Five millimeter Allen, get this cap off of here. These haven't been off in a while. Good to check these. Oh, those are really loose already. Like that gap is huge. Look at that. I'm surprised this thing didn't tick. So already the, the intake valves are way too loose. This one feels fine. These two are just huge, huge gaps. All right, let's check out the exhaust. And we'll get this thing to top dead center. Looks like they just put a bunch of that gasket sealer on everything. You can see the red coming through. I don't know if it was leaking at one point or if it was just for uh, extra precaution. But well, it's on everything. <laughs> That's okay. Oh yeah, there's oil leaking out of here already. I think that was the mark right there. See your valves open. Valves are closed, okay. When I get to the T. I'll have to take the spark plug out. Alright, spark plug's out of it. I iridium plug. Nice plug. Looks like it was running okay. It's not horribly black. It's like a darker brown. So plug looks pretty good actually. Alright, we finally got this thing to top dead center. And we're on the right stroke now, so. So you can kind of see the line in there. It's just a straight line. It lines up with the notch right here. So before that line, there's two lines. You want to go to the single line and line up with that groove. And then coming up here, you can see that the valves are all loose, and that's how you know you're on the correct stroke here. So, let's look at the specs for those and set those. 
All right, so valve clearances intake are 0.1 to 0.15 millimeters, and then exhaust is going to be 0.15 to 0.2 millimeters. Okay, just gonna loosen these up. These are 10 millimeter, and here. Look how loose those are. Okay, we're gonna set ours to 0.005 inches, which is 0.127 millimeters, so it's right in the middle of that 0.1 and 0.15 millimeters here. Actually, that's not even that bad. I feel like they're way looser than they were. Okay, that one barely rubs right there. That one's good. That one's loose. And we'll tighten those back down. See if they still go in. All right, those are perfect. On to the exhaust. All right, so I forgot to check the diaphragms and the carburetors before. I just checked those. Those look good. They look brand new. Um, so now we got the carburetors all the way fully on, so we shouldn't have an air leak. And then um, we got the new jets in there. So let's get the gas tank back on and see if she fires up and revs out now. Hopefully she does. Look at that little guy coming to help. You ready for the first start, bud? <laughs> hey, you ready? What do you think? Think it's gonna rev out? Don't look the camera. <laughs> all right, so carburetor's all perfect back to stock. Valves are checked and perfectly adjusted. Um, we've got good gas flow. We've got spark. Things should be good on it. All right, well that did not fix the problem. So everything we did, um, nothing worked on that. So let's start going through this wiring. It's, uh, it's pretty melted. So I'm gonna go through it and just make sure none of the wires are grounding out or anything weird. All right, I got the radiator loose and then took out all these wires behind there, but you can see they're all pretty melted. This one's actually for the sensor up by the clutch. And you can see the wires are exposed. So we're just gonna clean all this stuff up, get rid of all the burnt stuff. And look at all these plugs are all melted. So hopefully it didn't wreck the CDI or anything. I don't think it did because the CDI is in the back there. But if something got hot, it maybe wrecked the coil. And like this thing's melted. A lot of it's melted. The coil looks like it might be fine. A wire going to the coil is melted. It looks like it might be a ground wire. Maybe it's not getting a good ground. Alright, so I repaired all the wires. I cleaned up all the grounds to the coil. Um, and then I just replaced the spark plug. And uh, 
I noticed the spark plug was um, pretty yellow, the spark. It was like orangey yellow. I replaced it with a new plug and now we have bright blue spark. So let's now see if this thing will work. Revs out all the way. I did figure out that you do have to hold this in for it to rev out. So the parking brake, I'm just gonna tape that for now or zip tie it like that. But yeah, that has to be in for it to rev out all the way as well. Which we held it in before and it still wasn't working. So it's definitely the spark plug, <laughs> I think, or it could have been one of the ground issues. But uh, we figured it out, it revs out all the way. <laughs> Let's put this thing back together and um, Go take it for a little test drive. All right, one more thing I want to do before we take it for a test drive. I just want to solder all these connections by the CDI. Um, I don't want one to pull out while we're riding and then have it just cut out or something weird. All right, all soldered up, all good to go. Those aren't coming off. All right, she's all back together. Let's see if she fires up. Oh yeah, she revs out all the way, fires up. We got the uh, parking brake to work. So everything is good to go. Time for the first test drive. Let's see if it continues to rev out in first, second, third, fourth, and fifth gear. All right, runs good. Only thing I'm noticing is that the back brake doesn't work. So that is not working at all. Front brake does. Yep, front brake works. So let's fix that back brake here. All right, rear brake is fixed. All it needed was just the bleeding. So now, it works. So, let's take the GoPro and uh, go for a little trail ride, see how she runs. First test drive on the 2002 Yamaha Raptor. Let's see if it still has that issue when we go through all the gears here. Alright, turn it on here. Okay, we're going to try going in reverse here. So hold that, click down. I don't know if reverse is working.
There we go, there's reverse. Reverse works. And you just click up. Should be in first gear now. Lifts up. back here I'd say she's fixed. Pretty good. Definitely goes through all the gears now. Revs out completely. Oh yeah. gonna check the oil after the first ride here. Hopefully it's not milky or anything. Just looking at the level and uh, if it has a milky color to it. Oh man, that uh, is way overfilled. It's right at the top. So we are going to drain some of that out, I think. We don't want all that oil in there. Look, okay, it's right at the top. That's crazy. There's too much oil in there. All right, oil drain bolt on this thing is right here. You can see right there. Skid plate needs to come off before you take it off, though. And there's one in the bottom of the oil canister right down here. Let's see if I can get this off. All right, here's the oil that came out of it. Um, way over 2.5 quarts. It's probably three quarts in there. So an extra half quart, I'm guessing. Because the oil tank was completely filled. It's... All right, adding the other quart here. All right, we got fresh oil in there. This thing is done. All right, so this one is all done. Fresh oil, the back brake now works, valves were adjusted, carbs were cleaned and tuned, um, wires were cleaned up and soldered, fresh gas. So this thing is all set to go. Pretty powerful machine and it doesn't smoke, luckily. <laughs> Otherwise we'd be doing rings. So anyway guys, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. It's always fun tearing into these things and figuring out what went wrong with them. And in this case, a bunch of small things led up to it not being able to run. Stay tuned for next video.
And until next time, we are out. Thank you.